I, mean, I don't know if I should mention the, 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 the way that the relationship fell apart, but I think, um, if you haven't read yeah. the book, you, they, they, they lived in a flat in Paris together for six months, and they got together really because um, Alex Reed went to Paris to, well, he ended up working at the, at the um, uh, at Boussin Valadon, the dealers, um, which were dealers there, and uh, which the dealer that, that Theo van Gogh was working at. So they met him, and Theo suggested they should have a fa- share a flat together, and they lived together, the, three, the two brothers and Alex Reed, for about six months. And they got on very well together, and they talked about art, and um, they arranged that a- Alex Reed might, they would try to persuade him to sell Impressionist art in, in Britain, and possibly post Impressionist art too. Um, and then, anyway, at the end of it, uh, uh, there was, they were sitting together one day, and and Vincent van Gogh was, was suffering, no, sorry, Alex Reed was feeling rather down in the dumps because he had um, this girlfriend who he'd, um, he had this sort of affair, I think, when he was in Glasgow before he went to Paris. And the, the woman that he was in love with was actually American and she went off back to America and he was rather hoping that he might catch up with her again in Paris. But she, um, she got, she announced her engagement and uh, she was actually a woman called Mary Bacon Martin, and she, she married um, a man called Sheridan Ford, who was a great supporter of Whistler. And um, when I think at the moment that she announced her, her engagement, he became very depressed about this because mm-hmm. he realised that there was no hope. And um, so confessed all to Van Gogh, who said, I have the perfect solution. Let us commit suicide together. <laughs> of so, course. So this, um, this failed, sui- luckily failed, so suicide episode pack has sort of gone down in history. Reed said, um, it's quite funny actually, there's an account by one of his contemporaries, and he, he says, Reed replied, topping, but I have sisters in Scotland and I don't <laughs> want to put them to eat endless um, worry, so I shall. I have to go out and make preparations. <laughs> so, so that that was the cause of the the rift. Well, it was it was a major cause of the rift. Yes, I mean there was right. there's more to it than that. There's also the fact that they had become rivals, um, mm. dealing rivals, effectively. Um, Theo was a dealer, and actually he seems to be a much milder character. Uh, but Vincent was always was always slightly paranoid that that Reed was trying to kind of get in on their corner their, pa- their particular patch for a certain artist. And in particular, they both rather, both Theo and Alex Reed were interested in cornering the market for the work of a, a, a little known artist today, an artist called Adolf Monticelli, um, who came from the south of France, came from Marseille. And if you read the Van Gogh correspondence, it's full of references to this artist, Monticelli, um, who painted sort of, uh, a kind of, Neo Rococo, I'd say the 18th century fetch champêtre, you know, young ladies cavorting in the in the countryside, mm. really awful subjects, in fact. But painting this with this very thick impasto, and he used colour in a really kind of innovative way. And um, Van Gogh was fascinated by his work, Vincent Van Gogh, and actually he painted a whole series of still lifes, which are in response to Monticelli. And when he moved, when he left Paris, he went to Arles initially. But he was actually en route for Marseille, which is where Monticelli came from. And as soon as he arrived in Arles, he wrote a letter to Theo saying, I have spotted um, a picture by Monticelli in a local dealer's shop. And, and, and then he, and later on the letter he says, I think Reed will be quite angry that I, we have got, the, um, got ahead of him in the search for cornering the market for, for Monticelli's work um, in the south of France. Because they were actually going, they were, they were trying to make contact with people who you know, had first-hand knowledge of this artist's work. So did Alex Reed pick up on the Monticelli? Yes, he did, he yeah, did. he did, very much so. And um, he actually went to Marseille and he met, met a man, well, at least he may not have gone to Marseille, but he, he, he um, became friendly with a man called Fernand Dula, who was Monticelli's Marseille agent, and he also visited his dealer in Paris and bought up large amounts of his work and took it back to Scotland, where there was already a market for his pictures, right. which had been established by an earlier dealer. And when you read anything on Monticelli of, of the period, it says um, that Americans, because Americans, there was an American market, and Scots were ahead of the French and the British, or the English rather, um, in appreciating this artist. 
course, nowadays we don't appreciate it. Well, but I was just thinking <laughs> it's extraordinary that Monticelli's <laughs> prices have probably hit rock bottom. Yeah, absolutely. And Van Gogh's going through the roof. Yeah, and we, but the other thing about, the, about this connection with Monticelli was that Monticelli died in 1886, which was the year that Van Gogh went to Paris. And um, so Van Gogh was rather fascinated by him because he suddenly, suddenly his work became, well, there was a market for his work and it, because he died. And he had never been very successful during his lifetime in France perhaps with local collectors in the south of France, never been recognized. And then suddenly he was achieving this posthumous fame. And so Van Gogh in his own letters, he writes about this and he hopes that he, it's very poignant he, that he himself will achieve the same kind of oh. posthumous fame that Monticelli hence, achieved. Hence the rush to suicide, presumably. Well, <laughs> I don't know, I know. <laughs> it's so sad, anyway.